Hello and welcome to another video tutorial in this series on using Photoshop CC. My name is Justin and in this video I want to introduce you to working with 3D text in Photoshop. Alright, so I have this image right here and this image I downloaded from Flickr from uh, Jan Bones. And anyway, thank you Jan for uploading this to Creative Commons so that I could use it. Um, I was looking for some kind of a parking lot or warehouse or something so we could cast some shadows on a nice piece of cement. Alright, so this is a great image. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna come over here and select T for text, and I'm going to just type in some letters. Okay, there we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is extrude this, okay? Now, there's a number of ways that you can extrude text, just like there's always a lot of ways to do everything within Photoshop. One way is to come over here to the layer that you wanna extrude, right click, and then down at the very bottom, select New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. And just like that, a whole lot of things have changed. Our text is extruded. And look over here, um, if we go back to the layer panel, our text is now this uh, 3D scene, okay? And within that 3D scene, we have um, lights and cameras and the 3D object. And the 3D object now, which is our text, you can actually open up and every single side of the extrusion is its own layer, okay? And it's wrapped in a particular material, all right? So, um, anyway, and we can actually control these right here. We can change the colors, okay? Um, if we have, for example, I'll, I'm on the front right here, okay? I can come up here and change the color and diffuse, just like this, right? And we'll just change it to red for a minute, okay? Just like that. All right, see that red text? All right, I'm going to hit Command-Z and undo that. Okay, now, um, the quality of this is pretty low, and it's going to be low until you render the scene, okay? And that's just how this works with 3D, because we're going to be working with lights and shadows, and lights and shadows are pretty complex, and so you have to render the scene before you can really see how the light and shadows are going to interact with your 3D text, okay? Now, you can... Um, sometimes it can take a very long time to render, but if you just hit render and just render for even 10... 20 seconds, your shadows and lights will start to fall properly, and you'll get an idea of where you're going with that. And you'll see what I mean in a moment, but just be aware of that, that things might look rather low quality until you render your scene. Okay, so anyway, I'm, I have my uh, 3D object selected, okay? Now we have an extrusion depth here. We can actually uh, adjust that and extrude, okay? I can go into negative numbers and extrude it out this way if I want to. I just want it like, oh, like that, okay? Nothing too deep, okay? And this is um, the mesh properties. I can come over here to the deform properties, okay? And I can twist that bevel, or twist that extrusion, okay? Like so, I'm gonna undo that. We can actually uh, taper it, okay? So we can bring it way out or way in, okay? I'm gonna undo that. And we can come here to cap and actually uh, bevel it. Now, the beveling is just like when we bevel text um, the way you're probably used to when working with layer styles in Photoshop. Um, so we can bevel that front face of the extrusion like so. Okay. Um, let's see here. We also have these widgets right here where I can actually just bevel like by dra hovering over and dragging like so. Now, I actually don't want a really extreme bevel because I want this to look like metal or cement or something. So I want it kind of like that. Now, the strength right here, this will actually round it out. See that? Now the text is getting really round. Okay. Now, I actually don't want mine round, at least not too round. Oh, that's fine for what I'm doing. Okay. Um, let's see here. So back to the mesh properties. Um, oh, and by the way, since I'm going through all these, this is the positioning and scale properties right here. So you can just change these to change the scale or position. Speaking of changing the scale or the position, this widgets right here will let you do it as well. Okay, the cone one. Okay, see that how you can see the shadow right now. It's actually, uh, it's amazing how quick and easy it is to get 3D in Photoshop now. So anyway, um, I can move my object like so if I, by dragging on the cone. Okay, and that's the same for X, Y, and Z. Okay. Um, the next one down is to rotate. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Next one down is to scale, but it does not scale uniformly, so I don't wanna do that with my text, but I can come down here to the white cube and scale uniformly if I want to. Okay, and I'm just clicking and dragging. Okay, now, um, speaking of moving the object around, in 3D mode up here, we can actually select these, and if you hover over these, you'll get a tooltip that'll tell you what they'll do. For example, here's rotate. 
Okay, so I can actually rotate the object. All right, I'm gonna undo that. Okay, we can roll the object. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Okay, and then, you know, I mean, these are pretty self-explanatory, but if you hover over them, you'll get tips, okay? So again, this one is just a drag around. The next one, if we drag, it's actually dragging the object in and out, okay? All right, and then again, right here is the scale. Now, we can, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Now, over here, we can actually move the camera around, okay? So we can, you know, orbit the camera, pan, all right, and dolly, um, whoops and uh, dolly. Okay, now I'm just clicking and dragging again. So I'm gonna actually undo those, get back like so. And in fact, why don't I actually orbit the camera a little bit and kind of twist my text to the side like that? Okay, and instead of grabbing this uh, Y axis and moving this down like this, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up here to 3D and select move object to ground plane. Boom, just like that, okay? And what it did is it uh, synced up the text to the um, shadow, okay? All right, now, um, and I have all these widgets in the way. If I come over here to the rectangle marquee tool, it gets rid of them all. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and render this scene once just as it is, okay? So I'm gonna come over here. Now, um, here is how you render, okay? There's this little uh, cube right here, all right? If I hover over it, see how it says render? I'm gonna select render. Okay, now it's going to start rendering, and you can see the uh, the blue box that's kind of jumping all over the place as it's actually uh, tracing out this image, and it's rendering it. So this might take a few minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and just let it render all the way. All right, it's already looking much better, but we'll let it render all the way, and I'll skip ahead, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, and there we have the scene fully rendered. All right, so that's how we do this. Um, so what I want to do though is I want to add, well, I want to add some my own custom material to this. Okay, and so let's do that next. All right. So oh, and by the way, as while it's rendered like this, this is actually what you would do. And then if you wanted to save this image right now, so then of course you would just save this as a JPEG like so. Um, okay, like so. However, we are not going to do that right now. We're going to keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, 3D object right here. And um, let's see here. We can actually select any of these and just change their color. Okay, like um, for example, come up here to the front here and just change the uh, you know color to red, like so. All right. Um, but what I want to do is actually load my own material. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that now. And we can actually load all of them at once. So I'm going to actually make sure that, let's see, this top one is selected. Hold down Shift and select all five of them. Okay, so all this, um, all four sides and then also the bevel. Okay, so I have everything right here. And I'm going to come up here to Diffuse. And you see this little uh, folder right here. I'm going to open that up, okay, and then hit Load Texture. Okay, and I'm gonna hit right here, this metal base layer. This is the image that I got from CG Textures. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just open that. Look at that, that's how easy that is. Okay, so, um, okay, now we have a lot of different um, options right here, and I guess I would just suggest playing around with these some. Um, for me, I don't really want this to be that shiny or any reflection or anything, simply because I want this to look like it's metal or kind of a cement texture or something like that. All right, so um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and select my layer here again and come back up to the Move tool. And, oh, I'm sorry, not the not the text layer, the light here. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, move around the light, okay? And just play with the shadows a bit, all right? And see that? Yeah, it's really, really cool, okay? And again, I just have my infinite light, and the infinite light is created by default. And I'm just gonna kind of move this around. Let's see, I just want the shadow kind of coming off like this. I don't want it super sharp right here, though, so I'm actually soften up my shadow, okay? So again, I got the properties panel open. I'm on the infinite light, and I'm gonna just grab the shadow right here and make it a little bit softer. And you can see over here how it's getting softer. Okay, if I go way over here, like so, you can see it almost disappears. I don't wanna do that, but I don't want a really hard line like that because there's this light over here that won't look quite right. Just gonna soften that up a little bit, like so. Okay, now, since we're playing around with lights, let's go ahead and create another light, all right? Oh, by the way, if we turn off this light, check it out. 
all right it gets totally dark right so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this light on and then we'll come down here to this light bulb and create a spotlight okay there now we have this spotlight okay and of course right now it's pretty intense I'm gonna go ahead and move it all right now there's just two circles right here this one here is the hot spot okay I can just kind of click and drag in and um, this is the brightest part of the image, and this is how far the light, um, this cone angle is how far the light, you can see right here how it's opening, and it's just kind of like the cone of a spotlight, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and make it, you know, oh, I'm just playing around to show you, I guess, like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command minus just to shrink it down a little bit so I can reach everything up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and move this down a little bit like so. All right. Now it's it's way too bright for me, okay? And so we have all these options here. As long as spotlight is selected, okay? We have a whole bunch of different options right here, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna actually bring the intensity down, all right? And really, I just wanted to show you this thing. Um, let's go ahead, and maybe I'll just move this a little bit, okay, just to play with some different shadow angles, okay, so we'll go ahead and just move this guy like so, and you can see how, um, it's a little bit harder to see when we're not rendering, but you can see how this light is hitting right here, and it's kind of making right here bright, and it's keeping some dark shadows in here. It's hard to tell right now, but if we hit render... Okay, and that was only 10% rendered, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch, switch to my rectangle marquee. But as you can see, um, you can see some pretty clearly defined shadows in here now, okay? And that looks pretty cool. Um, let's see, let's just play around a little bit. We can turn the infinite light off. And now we just have the spotlight on here, okay? And you can see what the spotlight's doing where it's shining through here. It's not lighting up the front at all and just a little bit of light hitting in here, okay? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit the letter F Okay, and what that did is that ch changed us to full screen, and that's gonna allow me to pan just by hitting spacebar. So, or not pan, but to drag. So I'm going to uh, hit spacebar, and see how my icon changes to the hand? All right, I'm just gonna drag this down like so. Okay, and that just lets me reach these tools up here, these uh, light tools. Now, um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit. Okay, and just play with that until we get some, see how the light's coming out? That's kind of cool how that Z, the shadow's landing on that Z. I kind of like that. That looks pretty cool. And let's go ahead and turn the infinite light back on. Okay, now to me, the infinite light is way too bright where it's at, but I do like the way that's casting the shadow back here. So I'm just going to come over here and turn the intensity down a little bit. Uh, somewhere in between. I don't want it that extreme, but oh, let's see. Maybe we'll, we'll just type in up here, eight. That'll work. I think that'll work. Now I can't really tell how this is going to look right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do a nice full render. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and select render. Okay, and I can see already that you know the shadows are starting to show up right here, and they might be a little too hard edged. I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and just let this sit now and render, and I bet it takes about five minutes, so I'll be back. Okay, there we go, and so now it is fully rendered, and I'm going to come over here to file, save as, and save it as a JPEG, and we'll just save it as 3D text. Okay, like so. All right, maximum quality, of course. I'll open up Finder, go to the uh, desktop, and uh, take a look. There we go, all right, so we've got some fully rendered 3D text.